to the Average Fan Sports Talk Show, where Chicagoans around the country can tune in and watch Chicago sports topics. Finally, a real everyday Chicago sports fan show. Welcome back to the Average Fan Sports Talk Show, where everyday fans talk Chicago sports. We're finally back, everyone, and we're here at Rosati Sports Pub in Old Town Scottsdale, our official home for the 2016 Chicago Bears season. I'm your host, Mo, and these are my co-hosts, Rock and Big Fan, and we'd like to welcome all of you to our Crosstown Classic between the Chicago White Sox and Cubs. Uh, we have an exciting show today with the second half of the MLB season. Bears training camp starts up this weekend, and the promising Bulls, who recently won the NBA Summer League. Rock, there's a lot coming up in the next couple months, and I know you're pretty excited. Absolutely, Mo, and this is a good time for sports right now, guys. I mean, right now, you got both of our city's teams doing really good in baseball. Cubs, for sure, got the division lead right now. Big fan. I'm, sh I'm sure you're pretty happy to hear that. Pretty and happy. the White Sox are scrapping, man. I know a lot of stuff's been happening with the White Sox lately. Uh, not good, good, good word. <laughs> they're not. Uh, they're, they're, they're not looking uh, good news. Good in the news right now. But uh, tell you what, guys. We. What do you tell me about the Sox? Let's hear it. We always do this right into the trade deadline, where we start winning seven out of eight, and then it ends up screwing us because we don't do anything with it. Yeah, and, and I actually. I, I, that's that's one thing too. You, you could. You got it right. Well, like Kenny Williams this week just kind of said something in the news about con contradicting what. Uh, Rick Hahn was saying to the uh, to the media this week about you know what Rick Hahn was saying is that the team wasn't um, the team wasn't uh, what they were doing as an organization wasn't working. A couple days later, Kenny Williams come you know they started doing really good. They beat the uh, I believe they beat the, the Tigers and then they beat the Cubs a couple day couple games, and then they Kenny Williams came out. Uh, I think it was yesterday or Tuesday came out and he was contradicting. You know what we not we might not trade anybody. And that's how Kelly, Kenny Williams is, guys. Kenny Williams is the type of guy that, you know, thinks that he has a whole old organization. I mean, right now his his, his position in the, is the league and the team is vice president of I don't even know. <laughs> well, wait, you know what? I wouldn't blame it on Kenny Williams. I blame it on people like Abreu and Cabrera who haven't done anything. You say that Cabrera's got a big batting yeah, but it average. starts from the top, Mo. Ah, it starts you know from what? the top. It it's, starts it's, with the players, too. You know, they, a lot of these guys, everybody, I just yeah. don't see it. It's I not just, just one thing, but it doesn't help that the organization's not standing up for these guys, too, you know? It doesn't look good, is all I'm saying. Well, it, you can tell that the, you can tell that the Sox have issues because we're arguing about it, <laughs> and I'm just smiling. Yeah, because <laughs> well, I already know. All well, wait a minute, wait a minute. From what I saw last night and some statistics, big fan, um, there were month by month the Cubs' record has just gone down the toilet. You guys are in a losing record right now, and I'm sorry to say, but I believe that that's um, pretty much the Cubs' forte. They do have the best record in baseball right now, and I'm happy with that. <laughs> you, can, you can give me all the stats all right. you want. I'll just take the best record in all baseball, right. and we can work from there. Okay. Well, uh, you know, as far as uh, your insights on baseball and Cubs, you were just back in Chicago a week ago. And, uh, you know, how did they play while you were in town? Well, they won when I was there. And, uh, you know, one of the things that happened during this uh, terrible stretch is that Dexter Fowler went out. And uh, that definitely hurt the team. And at the same time, for about two weeks, the pitching was just terrible. Uh, it, it wasn't even just average or below average. It was just terrible. Uh, you know, sometimes I think that people talk about how winning's contagious and doing well is contagious, and I do think that exists. But I also think it goes the other way. I think guys try harder uh, to win, and it just kind of went south on them. And uh, that's fine. I mean, look, they weren't going to win 127 games. Uh, at some point, they had to go on a losing streak. Now let's straighten it out, get it straight. Let's go to the playoffs and take care of it. So you're saying that uh, they're going to end the season with the best record? I'm saying they're winning with the best record in about 107 wins. You know, their record for the last 30 games, I think, or 32 games, have been 12 and I think it's 12 and 20 right now. And I'm not saying that they're not they're, they're not going to keep doing good. I'm just saying they started off really hot, but you know, baseball is a long season. And I was telling that to I, a lot of people. It's like, I you know agree. What? It's a long season, guys. You're going to go through those dog days. We still, hey. August is coming up. So, 
White, White Sox fans, I'm telling you right now that I think that Chris Sale should just turn into Edward Scissorhands again because it's done well for our mojo. <laughs> so maybe Sale can carry through his uh, performance tonight. Um, I don't know. How do you guys really feel about uh, your the, the – this, the Cub Sox Crosstown Classic. Has it lost its luster? Should they play well, more games? You know, during the game last night, Hawk was kind of bitching. I know that's a shock. But he was bitching that the, the league doesn't put a focus on this series anymore. And he said they shouldn't play a Monday, Tuesday, and then a Wednesday, Thursday. If they should, be, This is one of the premier uh, series in baseball, and they should be playing it Thursday, Friday, or, or back-to-back weekends, or whatever it might be. So it is in a primetime situation, and they shouldn't have a Monday night and a Tuesday night. They should. They, this should be one of the featured uh, series in baseball, and, and it should be. And that's one of the things that, you know, you can't have. You can't tell the whole entire fan base, oh, you got to be excited Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday night. You know, people have to work. Uh, you know, they, but they, the crowds are still good, and obviously it's still intense, but there still has to be something to it. So. Yeah, I think uh, I think one of the things that to, to, to kind of um, go with that big fan is that this week they've been on primetime a lot. And if you if you noticed, on Monday was, I think, believe it was the only game that wasn't on, on, on TV. But uh, Tuesday's game was on ESPN, Wednesday's game was on ESPN, and right now the, this game today, the final fourth game, is on MLB Network. So I know not everybody gets MLB Network, but it's, you know, if you have cable, you're going to have MLB Network. That's, so the, you're right. But the, the main thing is that they should be playing on the weekends. Last year, I know I was there for the 4th of July for the first game at Wrigley. And, uh, you know, they, it was on a Friday through Sunday. And then the following, a couple weeks later, it was on the south side. And that was on the weekend as well. So I just, I don't know how the league is, is doing that. But it was good to see them that they were on national television this week a few times. And. And maybe the, the people will actually see that, yeah, it's pretty exciting stuff that, that's going on, you know, when the two teams get together. Well, I have a, an interesting question for both of you. Who would you guys like to see coach the Chicago White Sox next season? Because it's not going to be Robin Ventura. I don't, see, I don't see him lasting another season. I thought he was going to be fired in the beginning of the season, but uh, I just don't see, the, I don't see the fire out of him. I, I love Robin Ventura. But he's too nice of a guy. I said this over and over, and I sound like a, a, a broken record. I'm beating a horse here. But I, I, who would you like to see for, uh, the, you know, as the skipper okay, for but, the Sox? But once again, this goes back to what you were talking about before, Rock, where you got, okay, what, what are you doing? What, what's the team doing? What is, is it? Is it we're going to have Sale and Abreu, and they're going to be maybe good, so we're going to try. We're going to make a run maybe at a wild card. We're not going to – we're going to bring in the next Jimmy Rollins. We're going to bring in the next guy that's on the verge of being – and it's like, where, where's the plan? Where, where's the plan? I, and then, then you could talk to me about the manager. But if you're not going to have a plan from the top down and it's going to be Kenny Williams throwing out these, well, you know what, we might bring back Roberto Alomar at 42 years old. And, you know, where's the plan? And then from there you can give me the manager. Because if you're not going to make the change and you're just going to wing it again and try and throw it against the wall and catch the lightning, you may as well bring back Robin, you know. Oh, so, wait, wait, wait. I'll, I'll combat that with let's bring back Ozzy. Ozzy. It's fine with Ozzie. me. Right. But if, that, if that's what you're going to do, go ahead. You know, if that's if you you're going to try and get the fight, if you're going to try and catch the fire for one year and just be lightning in a bottle and not grow a team, not have a plan, which they keep claiming they have, then fine. Go ahead. Bring back Ozzy because I think he's as good as anybody for one year. You know, if you're going to go for it. I think he would take the position. What do you think, Rock? I mean, I <laughs> come on. Yeah. That's, bra- <laughs> that's brown power, dude. Come on. <laughs> Uh, Z. <laughs> nah, it, that's not gonna happen. I mean, that, that whole that, that whole thing with oh, him. No, no, I, mean, no, I think no, people just be... people just got tired of him after a while. And I and I'm just gonna say this from being a Sox fan and a lot of people that that root for the Sox, they just got tired of him. You know. Uh, well, you know what, guys, blowing up, blowing up, and saying just stuff in the media. I mean, look at what happened when he went to Miami. He said something ridiculous in the media. You can't be saying that stuff, man. It's like it's just stuff that people take personally, whether it's... Yeah, but the players played for him. He played small ball. He moved players around the diamond. He, he did not accept mediocre play. He did not accept people jogging to first base. He did not accept a lot of things that are just like the fundamentals of baseball. I see so many people jogging things out. I mean, you could get a triple out of a double. You know, like last night I saw Sh- Shuck miss a fly ball because he got alligator arms at the wall that could have been a triple if the guy was just running but he probably jogged thought he was gonna you know maybe get a double out of it and i see stuff like that all the time in the pros and you know i just see that uh you know a guy like ozzy just expected a lot out of people 
And, you know, that year that they won, it, yeah, it was lightning in a bottle, but there was some good, pretty good chemistry on that team. And I just, I just don't see the fight. I don't see the fire. I don't see the pizzazz in the White Sox. I see it in the Cubs. I hate to say it, but I see it in the Cubs. They fight. They scrap. They got talent. They move the ball around. They get hits. Um, that does come from the manager. And, and I think that they play for their manager. I've yep. said that over and over again. So I don't know what those Sox are going to do, but it does start from the top down, and I believe it also starts with the players, too. They need to get somebody. And I think that maybe it was sales cry out to the team, like, oh, hey, I'm not, settle, I'm not settling for, that is part of for it. mediocre management. Yeah, that is part of it. I think sale, I think, I think sale um, is when they always throw it as a competitor and he's the leader of the team, and I agree with that. But at the same time, you know, he's a player, and that's not his job is to, to you know, he is not the guy. And, and one thing with Sale, you know, I know that the Sox love to talk about it. Uh, they got him under control for very low money, extremely low money. You can't tell me that doesn't dig into him, okay? And the ramifications of getting a deal on a guy like that and getting the upper hand on him for long term, yeah, financially, of course it helps your team. But you know what? You need to take into account the psychological uh, edge or the psychological deficit that happens to a guy where he knows that he's getting nothing compared to some of these guys that are signing $200 and $300 million deals when he's worth it too. I know he signed it. I, I get it. But, you know, you were 21 years old. Guy came to you and said, hey, I'm going to give you $28 million guaranteed no matter what. You're going to sign it. You know, that's what's going to happen. And I you, say get rid of Cabrera and Abreu and uh, develop our farm league because we just lost. Our farm league is depleted with Anderson coming up. Uh, and I don't know. I mean, we got to get some players for some players right that's now. That's a plan. That That's more of a plan. And I think, honestly, I think that's Rick Hahn's plan. That's what Rick Hahn wants. Kenny doesn't want. And Kenny keeps sticking his nose in. He keeps backing out and then he comes back in and he doing you know I mean the guy was gone for about two years and then all of a sudden he shows up then one day he shows up and he kicks out LaRoche's kid that was the problem with it it wasn't the fact that he did it you know if everybody knew Kenny was in charge and he was there running the team it, fine you get it but all of a sudden I don't know you just decide to hey I'm playing president today you know I'll, I'll be back in three weeks when you guys figure everything out but today I'm president and then we'll see you again in three weeks when something else happens you know They'll, 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 they'll figure something out. I mean, they're going to have to sit down at this offseason. Uh, for sure, I'm very surprised Ventura's is still there. I know we had talked about it just a second ago, but I'm very surprised. I thought that after the second month that they had of the season where they just completely fell apart for the month of May, I thought he would have definitely been gone then. But, you know, they decided to uh, stick with he, him. Uh, <laughs> I mean, just so you know, the guy that brought Ventura to the table to Jerry Reinsdorf was Kenny Williams. And now the word is that the guy that wants him out more than anybody is Kenny Williams. Look, Kenny, you know what? Thanks for admitting your mistake. I get it. But you know what? How can you be the, you know, you're, hey, we just made that we're going to start again. We're going to start again. So, you know, that, it's, that comes back to having some plan of what you're going to do. Well, um, I will say this. We've beat up baseball long enough, guys. I think it's time that we take a break and listen to some of our commercials and we'll come back and talk about the Bears. So uh, catch you after the break. The perfect anytime snack. Enjoy on the go or in your living room. Football fans, make pretzel crisps your snack this NFL season. Welcome back to the Average Fan Sports Talk Show here at Rosati Sports Pub in Old Town Scottsdale. And I am personally psyched about what the Bears have done this season. We're tuning in. The game is the actual Cub Sox game is in the top of the sixth. Cubs are winning two to one. Sox are at bat. Pretty competitive series, but we're on to the Bears. So, um, you know, I know our off season, uh, the Bears has spent some money, and I think they've uh, tightened up some of our weak areas. Big fan, I know you have some insider info on the moves the Bears made. Um, when are we going to Vegas and putting some money down on the Bears that are going to win six games? I mean, isn't that a lock? Since we have spoken, uh, it <laughs> has moved up to seven and a half. So uh, we got to get our bet in soon. And it is costing you 130. Uh, you have to lay 130 to win 100 and get Let's over the seven. Right now. And get over the seven and a half at this point. <laughs> um, I, like I said, I haven't uh, finished my complete analysis of. Uh, where I think they're going to be. Uh, but I do think that 
they have a, a decent shot at it. Uh, of course, I loved the six, and I think so did everybody else. Um, Sports Illustrated came out with an article on actually the seven and a half, and it was one of the best bets of the year to go under. The Bears have the last five seasons been one and four in the under in Vegas, uh, whatever that number is. So that tells you something. And part of that is that it's Chicago, and in, I've talked about it with the Cubs and other things that the Chicago fans, they definitely bet everything up. Uh, you know, so it's, it's not like a shocker that the number went up to seven and a half. I really, off the top of my head, just looking forward, I kind of felt eight was. Uh, very, very realistic. Uh, like I said, I haven't finalized breaking it down, but I do think that's about where they're going to be. Of course, we have to go back to the very, you know, simple disclaimer, uh, you know, injuries aside at that point. So, Well, Rock, uh, how are you feeling towards the Bears this year? How do you, how do you think we drafted? How do you think that we're going to be? Uh, what are your predictions? Honestly, I, guys, I, I really think the Bears are going to be in it for the playoffs this year. Um, I know I'm kind of setting the expectation, the bar kind of high there, but to tell you the truth, how can you not? Are there you were so many get. Ga- there's so many. What was that orange Kool-Aid you're drinking? I don't even have anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all looking for it. <laughs> and honestly, doesn't, doesn't I'm just saying it, sure. it as as kind of like a bear I'm fan. Not, I'm not even a bear fan. I'm actually a Niners fan. Everybody knows that. So <laughs> I'm saying it here from a from a. A point of view here where just a new, neutral person. <laughs> oh, is that, is that what it comes down to? Is that it, what it comes it's down red to? red, too. I'll stab you in the neck. <laughs> uh, so, yes, they, they have a chance for the playoffs. Now, it's going to be hard because the Packers and, and, and the Vikings are in that division. But, you know, the Packers really, really didn't show like they were all that last year, guys. I mean, they, had a, they, they started okay. Middle of the season, they did pick it up. But at the end of the season, they were... They're kind of struggling there. Well, I, I, and I'm just saying this because the Bears, there were so many te- games last year, and you guys both know it, that they should have really won those games. I mean, I can name you at least three, four games that they should have won. And with the additions that they've had this offseason, I mean, Akeem Nix, Danny Trevathan, that's... I agree. I mean, I, I'm with you in the I'll, sense that I, I think the defense is going to be uh, the front seven, I'll call it, very solid. I mean, I, the containment's going to be there. Trevathan, allegedly, according to all the experts exactly. that follow Denver, they said that Trevathan was the reason why that defense worked, not Von Miller. Trevathan is the guy that, that had to be occupied by two offensive linemen. They had to be accounted for all the time. With those seven, I feel great. There, I, I was reading an article about the fact that you got the secondary, how new it is. That is where there is going to be a question. But when I look back at John Fox, there's two things that Fox has done. He always has young guys, speedy, athletic guys in the secondary, and he has the front controlling it. And he also always uses three to five running backs, okay? And he just likes to grind it out and win. And uh, great stat on John Fox, never had back-to-back losing seasons as a coach. I don't think he'll have one. I think that he's done enough in the offseason. I think he's had some pretty big influences on, um, you know, the uh, management and what they're doing, I think he's got to say so. And I don't think he was happy with a losing season. I think that he's drafted well. I thought he picked up a lot of free agents. We had a lot of money to play with. And uh, when you shore up the defense and the offensive line, that's never a bad plan. It's never a bad plan. Running back by committee, I'll take it. Forte, you know, he was kind of on his way out. He was hurt the last two, three seasons. I haven't seen a lot out of him. He's a great player, and I wish the best for Matt Torrey. Matt Forte, love him. Um, loved him as a player, and I think he really wanted to retire as a Bear. Definitely. Um, but we have a lot of talent behind him right now, and you know what? I'll take three running backs pounding at you all the time. I said it before, the Patriots do it, and they do it well. You don't have to have big names. Give me three good names that can stay healthy. And, you know, if you get 500, 600, 800 yards out of three separate running backs that have three separate, separate talent skills, I'll take it. Um, you know, and you look, when you look at our Leonard Floyd, our draft pick, they say he's light. I say he's the next Lawrence Taylor. He's fast. We need pressure on the outside. We need Rodgers to always feel uncomfortable because he's just been running around doing whatever he wants to do. Um, I think with Trevathan, uh, I don't know how do you spell, how do you pronounce his name? Trevathan. Trevathan. Trevathan, you got it. Trevathan. Um, I think that he is a linebacker that will um, replace some of the talent level that we lost with Urlacher and a Briggs, you know, because those guys were old, a little slow, lost a little of their skill set. 
Um, I, our cornerbacks were always really small. I think that they got another year under their belt. I think that they're, they're going to have to step up. I mean, you can't get away with small defensive backs that get burned all the time. Um, we were second worst in turnovers last year, creating turnovers, and I think that uh, that will drastically improve. I think you'll see us move to maybe the middle of the pack, which is a huge, huge step up for the Bears. We're used to having a lot of takeaways. We're used to having a defense where I don't care what team was coming into Chicago, they always feared getting smacked in the mouth by the Bears. Ball punch. They always left saying, you know what, we might have beat them, but, you know, we got smoked. We got beat up. And that's and that's one of the things that, that's that's one of the, last year, uh, the Bears were uh, second to last in turnovers last year. I think they only had eight turnovers all last year, and a lot of it has to do with our cornerbacks, like you said, Mo, uh, and, and and Big Fan. I know you touched a little bit of, about that earlier. That our guys are, are, are t our guys are small. You know, Adrian Amos is a small cornerback. Ward is the other small cornerback. Um, and I know last season we also had that whole issue with the uh, uh, roll. You know, he was always injured and stuff like that, so he didn't really get to show much of a force on the defensive side of the ball. And, and so you had it, guys coming in, in and out of the secondary. With that said, you know, the de the, the, off, the defensive line, you know, who I think is one area that's going to really need to step up their game this, this season, and that's being Akeem Nix and Eddie Goldman. Those are two guys that are really going to have to come in and put a lot of pressure because they're going to be – the guys in the front of the line, defensive tackle, or, you know, they run a 3-4 scheme. That's, you know, that's that's the type of scheme that they run. And so, you know, with that said, I think, you know, come bringing guys off off the outside, at the edge, you know, that's only going to help out, you know. Uh, starts me. at the zero spot. Yeah, that's exactly. where it starts. You exactly. get you get you get two guys that need to take care of the nose tackle. Uh, you know, it just opens up the amount of possibilities. And then if, once again, if everybody's right in the sense that uh, Trevathan is uh, occupying two more guys, uh, you know, then you, this is how you work in Floyd. This is how you work the kid in with the alleged speed, uh, the ability to get to the quarterback. Uh, you know, he's a little thin. I understand that. But, you know, he's going to put on some weight. But he's got that speed. And if he can get around the edge because these guys are occupying him, that's, I mean, that's essentially what Von Miller does. Von Miller was the guy coming around the edge yeah. while Trevathan and the line was taking him. You know, I'm not saying Von Miller's not a great player and everything like that, but I'm sure that is the way that Fox envisioned this kid coming in and all these guys being occupied by multiple bodies and this guy getting not just a clear path but at least something on the edge he can beat people on the edge and and that's and that's correct and and, and so they're all going to kind of have to supplement each other there uh, on the way the scheme is stunts the front, on the front of the line and you know Leonard as you indicated you know just a moment ago uh, Mo I think what they're going to probably do is maybe use him on a situational downs, like a like a quarter, yeah, like, like a, a third like down, a third type, down of type of guy, just kind of let him go crazy, and, and see see where he goes from there. But you know, definitely Trevathan and and with the pickup of Jarrell Freeman coming over from the Colts, I think that's going to be kind of nice. They can both supplement each other on, on the backside of the of the line. Think about this, guys. We have White and Floyd coming in almost like we're getting two first round draft picks. Yeah. I'm so excited to see what White can bring. Yes. I mean, I literally think he could be the next Larry Fitzgerald. He's a big dude. He's fast. He can jump. They say nothing but good things out of him. I, you know, bad fortune for him last year that he broke his leg, but who knows? That might give us 13 years of healthy out of him. So, I mean, when we get two young, explosive, athletic guys coming into the Bears, I mean, that's almost like back when we got Budkiss and Gail Sayers in the same draft. I mean, if we have to take advantage of this and push them, push them to be, you know, the next uh, big athletes. And I think I don't think that Cutler's going to complain having another big physical specimen that he can throw to that's got hops and speed. Um, but, you know... Uh, the big thing with the Bears is is that, you know, we all talked about how their defense was horrible two years ago. Last year, their, their defense actually pulled it out. They're actually, their defense held them in games. I think if they can improve upon their deep, defense, which I think they have, they've shored up that offensive line and moved, you know, long down to his guard spot. We got Massey. We got some good, deep, you know, offensive ends. It, it, really, it really boils down to can we stay healthy? Can we, can we stay healthy for a whole season? And if we can, I think that with the moves we made and the draft picks we've made, the Bears are going to be – I think they're going to surprise some people, I hope. 
Yeah, and, and that's, I mean, that's, that's kind of where you hope that they will actually, actually do is that they'll, they'll sort of surprise some people and not kind of be the expectation that, hey, they're going to be. They, you know, I, I they're, think they're, you got some team leaders here, and I, I was reading something about Kyle Long was talking about um, don't disrespect this team. And I, I'll go back to the seven and a half in Vegas because, you know what, every single one of those guys knows when that kind of number comes out. They know exactly where the realm. I mean, they might not know it's exactly at seven and a half right now, right. but they know it came out at six to seven. Every single guy in that team knows what the expectations are. And he flat out said this week, do not, you know, don't disrespect this team. I think there's a lot of big guys. They have the ability with that defense, a running game and big offense. You can control. I mean, Lovey would have loved this team. He'd be able to control the clock yeah. and and just take it away and just put pressure on and just essentially look. You know, the other team they don't have the ball. That's it. You know, if you hold the ball for 46 minutes out of it and, and score three touchdowns, that game's yours. So, and, and and if you look at their schedule, guys, their schedule is weak. second weakest Sec in yeah. the league. That's, yeah, there you go, right there. You know, they open up at at, at Houston and they come home against Philadelphia. Then they go to Dallas, and then they come home against Detroit. So right. Houston, hey, no, possibly without J.J. Watt, by the way. Exactly, because he's got Schedule, issues in the pup list right now. <laughs> Schedule week, go deep into the playoffs. <laughs> I'm good with it. Yep. I mean, the, the opportunities there, they don't have a target on their back. You know, they weren't good last year, so a lot of they can surprise some teams. You know, they can get those wins, and that's, that's why I'm saying, I mean, they'll have a shot at that wild card. I know there's a lot of great teams coming out of the NFC you know, this year, but, you know, they'll have a shot only because of the record. A lot of teams, they don't have a target on their back, and they have a lot of new additions. And last year, they had a lot. They lost a lot of games that they should have won. Well, here's my hopes for this season, that uh, Aaron Rodgers has, um, you know, some type of chronic injury where he's not at his fullest. And, uh, the, Bears, Green Bay, man. and the Bears can stay healthy. That's <laughs> I'm over Green Bay. I'm over Green Bay, and I'm over Seattle. Yeah, well, they're our nemesis, team. man. Rodgers owns us, and I hate it. I hate it. Everybody's still down on Cutler. And, you know, he could have a breakout season. He could throw for more yards than anybody. I mean, he's a gunslinger. We just got to have the right line in front of him. He's never had an, a Green Bay line in front of him. Never. And, you know, if he can, if he can just stay healthy and stay uh, sure-footed, I think he will do well. Hopefully he won't throw, throw too many picks. Um, I, I'm predicting, you know, a 10-6 season. I think that the Bears could – possibly be in the run to win their conference and if they do you know they might go deep in the playoffs what do you think big fam well i don't see this team going deep in the playoffs um because of the fact that i still think they are going to be in a situation where an explosive team is still going to be able to beat them okay the controlling the clock it's, it's the problem basically i had with lovey in the whole career of the fact that you know, if there's a team with a bad quarterback and just some bad faults and you play to beat them, you know, you can devise a nice little game plan to beat that type of team all day. And over your career, over eight years, I believe Lovey's record is like 580 or 600 against below 500 teams because, yeah, yeah you can dominate. But, you know, this the the holding of the when you don't have the explosive offense and you play a team that has explosive offense and you don't have something to come back against them when if they go up two touchdowns on you well then running the ball and controlling it and everything like that is great but you know it doesn't get you back in the game and that's what the top teams the top five teams in the league you want to be in the top echelon of the league you have to have that type of offense to be able to compete that's where i see them lacking still at the so end what of are your day. predictions for the bears I'm just going to say at this point, eight wins, but I still am reserving the right to fine-tune it after I break down my final analysis and place my wager. All righty. <laughs> <laughs> hundred bucks on eight wins. Rock? I mean, I'm, pr I'm predicting at least at least a hunt for the wild card. That's I'm going to leave it at that. Hunt I'm for gonna, the wild card? That's the wild card. I'm not going to say okay, if they're cool. going to get in. But How, I, how's I'm, San Fran going to do this year? They're gonna be. They're not gonna be as bad as they were last year. How about that? There's. Uh, I don't know about this Q, uh, quarterback situation. Um, either do they? So they they, well. I know that they're. Um, I mean, I don't so know. who's gonna have a better record, Bears or? Uh, 49ers? Oh, the Bears. You look at this. You look at the schedule you guys have. You guys have the second easiest schedule. We have the the first, the hardest schedule in the whole NFL. How does that happen with the team that that had went only won five games last year, and then they have the hardest schedule in the league? 
How does that happen? And then Green Bay gets the easiest schedule. Because it's league. already planned of which Jesus, division they're going to play the next season. Well, I'll say this. How about all these Chicago fans that showed up tonight for the Cubs-Sox game here at Rosati's in Old Town? I think there's some awesome support here. We have some politicians here. Big shout-out to Kelly Ward and to Kathleen Wynn, my yes, mom. Yes. I see a lot of people out here that are good Chicago people <laughs> and Chicago fans. So um, big shout-out to them. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we will wrap up the Cubs Sox games. Enjoy some messages from some of our sponsors. The weather is going to start getting nice here in Arizona, and it's time to enjoy getting out and exercising. The Average Joe's Ride Shop is in South Scottsdale at Miller & McDowell on the Greenbelt. They specialize in bicycles, all BMX race, park, cruisers, freestyle, dirt jump, and race frames. Scooters, decks, bars, wheels, forks, headsets, bearings. If they make it, Average Joe's has it. They also have a complete in-house repair shop. If you break it, we fix it. Make sure you mention this ad when you stop by or call the Average Joe's Ride Shop. All right, guys, welcome back to the Average Fan Sports Talk Show. We're here at Rosati Sports Pub in Old Town Scottsdale, and it looks like the Cubbies took another game from the White Sox, 3-1, to one, evening the series up. Um, I don't know, guys. It was a uh, last lackluster performance by the White Sox. No runs. Uh, Sale got a loss, correct? Sale got a loss. And uh, Sale got a loss. to the Cubs, maybe he should uh, chop up some more jerseys and uh, then he won't have to pitch. Um, but uh, it was a cool game. I enjoyed having all these Cubs fans here, Sox fans here. It was neat to see Chicagoans, but obviously I'm a little bummed that the White Sox did not win. Um, big fan, how'd you feel about the uh, Cubs performance today? Uh, solid uh, performance. Got to like the pitching today. Um, you know, the, the pitching's basically back um, at this point, which is really what's going to take us into the postseason. Um, you know, pounding on the bad teams in the league is great. That's how you get there. Uh, that's how you get your home field advantage. It's fabulous. Uh, but, you know, th there's going to be a lot of low-scoring games in the playoffs, and you, you got to have that pitching there because, uh, I've, I've heard some of the experts, uh, and I'll rip on Steve Stone again here with his uh, Stony. Uh, when the when they scored less than three runs, the Cubs really have a low record. Well, uh, I saw a stat that uh, when every single team in the league scores less than three runs, not one of them has a winning percentage of over 400. So, Mr. Stone, one day, you know, you can take that fake law degree of yours and actually look at the stats <laughs> that you actually pronounce on the air to try and tell everybody that, oh, yeah, when a team doesn't score more than three runs, you know, it's not going to be a great outcome for them in that sense. And the stats, true, you know, nobody has. I think the highest winning percentage I saw was 386, and I think it was Washington. Well, uh, Sutcliffe the other day said that uh, the Sox should trade everybody and dump everybody and the, and the Cubs are the best and the Sox are the worst and uh, we don't know what we're doing. But, you know. Yeah, it sounds about right. I guess, I guess Sutcliffe was, he's won a couple World Series and uh, yeah, so he has something yeah. to show for. Yeah, because he knows so much. <laughs> <laughs> so you can tell the Sox fans are bitter. Yeah. We, wanted to, we wanted to pounce on the Cubs and at least go one more up on them. But... Uh, I don't know, Rock. How'd you feel about uh, the Crosstown Classic series? Uh, it was it was fun, man. It was it was kind of cool to see, you know, both sides of town all into the series. And the only unfortunate thing is we couldn't see at least two more games. And we talked about it earlier on the show where, you know, you, you we're used to seeing at least three three on each side of town. But you know, to this year for some reason they decided to just make it two and two, um, and especially during the week, man. It's just you know, you would you would at least think that they would step it up and make it on the weekends, but. You know, we'll wait and see. Next year's another year or so. But, uh, you know, we got two teams right now that are, are probably going to be looking, di or at least one of our teams is going to be looking different you know, uh, in the next next I, week or so. I wish I could find the name of the lady that does the there, – there's, there's some old lady that puts together the schedule. And uh, maybe three years ago, four years ago, I actually heard uh, Molly and Hanley in Chicago talking to her. And – I mean, she, I, it sounds as if she gets calls all the time from sports radio stations complaining about basically what we're complaining about. And <laughs> she actually is so fiery, and she's almost like, a, 
You, you guys got to play each other for three years in a row. And I, I mean, it was absolutely. And it was just funny that somehow or another, like, this is the person that schedules all the Major League Baseball games. This lady who just kind of yells at everybody. I, and I'm just <laughs> guessing that at some point in time, they don't take it away from her because everybody's probably scared to take away the duty from can her. You, can you imagine that job? Just people oh. calling you, how do you? Imagine if, it, right. now, imagine if you were the NFL scheduler. Yeah, how but, about that? Right, but that at least you're once a week and you have to, you know, and so on. And you know you're going to get eight games home. You're going to get eight games in a row. Two, you know, it's going to be easy within the division. There's really not that much to schedule for the NFL in that sense. But for these hometown teams, I mean, she was just because everybody calls me. Everybody calls me and complains about this stuff, you know, from all the cities. Well, I do like the uh, <laughs> interleague play. I think it's awesome. I, I, I know that the city of Chicago is making millions and millions of dollars on the entertainment. It's warm out. People are enjoying the games. You know, we split them 2-2, the series. And uh, I'm sure that all Chicagoans have had fun who have gone to the games. Um, I, unfortunately, went to a game while I was in Chicago. Rock and I were there, and the Yankees beat the White Sox 8 to nothing, <laughs> and had, like, 20 hits on us. It was horrible. But, uh, I don't know, the White Sox, I have not felt as if they've been a championship-caliber team for a long time. Um, you know, it doesn't surprise me that a team like the Cubs – spanks them every once in a while but i don't know it was a pretty fair series and uh i'll take 50 50 with the cubs i guess it's better than getting swept or coming out on the losing end yeah the the, the two like i said two the both games uh were pretty exciting and they were other than just the first, the game yesterday they were they were pretty close so i mean this like you said just today's game it was only two runs it was it was actually a one run game up until the, the eighth inning so it just goes to show you how much, you know, you know, they say, hey, these games don't count and stuff like that. But, you know, inside these guys, it does count because the fans are into it and they feel it from the fans. I and mean, you can you can sense it there when you're there at the same. And I know firsthand because I, I was just there last year at one of the games. So, um, you know, two teams going in opposite directions. Sox uh, probably won't look the same uh, here probably in the next week or so. Uh, the Cubs got, got, a, got a strong guy, Aralos Chapman. They picked him up. So... You know who knows what they're going to be able to do. You know this is this is a guy, this is a, t uh, a team that people were saying, you know, what are they going to do about their bullpen? What are they going to do about their bullpen? You know they just solidified that, and I know that maybe he doesn't have a lot of a lot of playoff experience, but we're going to find out, guys. We're going to find out, you know, in the next next couple months here, whether it was worth picking up these guys or not, because he's only on a one-year contract. He's a, he's a free agent at the end of this year, so. You know, we'll wait and see here what the, what they got. You know, thank God football's around the corner. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm I'm kind of over baseball. Um, baseball is such a long season, such a boring game. I know it's a lot of fun to go to these games and drink some beer and have a hot dog and sit around. But I'm I'm more of an action type of guy, and I'm really happy that we have football, hockey, and basketball coming up. So, um, Bears, please don't let us down this year. And uh, as far as baseball, I'm kind of over it. I don't know. You're, you're, you have big fans like, oh, I'm really, I'm really just getting started. Basically, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I look at it this way for a long time, and even last year, I, I mean, I, I'm, I will say this: my, I'm uh, self-subduing my expectations until we get to the point because I, you know, I don't know if I can go through another National League Championship Series and have a crushing uh, blow again because. Uh, you know, it'd be like, okay, you know what, I've, I've done this for God knows how many years and I just can't get to that point again and, uh, you know, before I end up taking up the game of chess professionally in the event that that happens. But so. that's, I mean, that's, 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 that's the Cubs for you, man. That's, it's kind of like the Cardinals, too, the Arizona teams. They always get there and then, like, ah, oh, you know, you're just like, you know, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be a I'll, I'll just say this. I'm just going to say it. I'm glad that we won a World Series before the Cubs. <laughs> because if we didn't and the Cubs were in the hunt like they have been the last two years, I would be even more the, ticked I'm off at the White Bar Sox. Barman, Barman ruined their dreams, man. The that crazy guy. <laughs> thing, the crazy thing that me and my guys were talking about last week in Chicago would be if on August 31st, Theo and Jed activated Schwarber for one day. And then put them back on the, I think the 15 DL, because you have to be active on September 1 in order to be active, be on the playoff roster at any given for any one of the series. Now, 
And, and not that. And I understand. Look, everyone said, "Oh, he's not going to be back. He's not going to be back." I get he's not going to be back. Okay, I fully understand that. But you have a situation where you're telling me that the guy he's not going to be ready to hit November 15th, but he's going to be ready in February or January to start swinging a bat. I, you know, I got a feeling he could. Yeah, I don't want him in the outfield. I don't want him swinging. But you know what? If I got to bring up a guy to pull my Kirk Gibson. Let him let him take a swing. Okay. <laughs> well, um, you heard it first. It's a pretty good theory. I think that uh, the Cubs have a lot of depth. They have a lot of young talent, and uh, no matter who they have on their squad, they're gonna all compete. Um, I just hope they don't celebrate like they did last year, because that looked like a real uh, a floozy European party afterwards with the champagne <laughs> and disco well, lights. Now they have the entire disco clubhouse. Yeah, they have like the whole clubhouse. Yeah, the clubhouse is, is a club officially now. disco. Oh, hey, club. Yeah. it is on the north side, and it's you know oh, in Boys no, Town. Here we go. <laughs> but uh, you know, I don't know. I felt uh, kind of awkward last year when they won and they were celebrating. It was almost if, as if they didn't know how to celebrate. But that's just me. An another poke at the Cubs. Um, I'm pretty much done with baseball. You guys over it? Nope. No, not really. I'm a baseball fan, man. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to still watching the games. And you guys should be, you know, the next league. Yeah. You rock like you said. You know, okay, th this is where this is where the White Sox can create some type of direction. Where if you're going to say, you know what, all right, Frazier, we're going to trade you. Melky, we're going to trade you. Quintana, we're going to trade you. That at least, you know, you don't have to trade Sale and Abreu. You can keep them. But if you're going to keep them, what are you going to do then? You're going to bring in other guys that are comparable to Tim Anderson, and you're going to let them grow together? That means it's for the next two, three years you're going to grow. So what, what are you going to left with? You're going to left with Sale at age 30 and uh, Abreu at age 31 and 312 pounds. Okay? Well, for, you know? for, for one, and they're not, they're not just not going to get rid of everybody, okay? And I don't, I don't I, to me, I don't think they're not going to get rid of Sale before the trade deadline. There's, there's just not enough that they're going to get back. Cabrera and Abreu, at this point please, the get rid of them. I agree. Can, can you, the teams that will really want him, like Boston, the Nationals, um, you know, who else is out there? The Mets. The Mets got a solid pitching staff. Or, or L.A. even. L.A. has got at, all this money. Okay, but you, you need – I mean, I tell you this, Frazier's not going to come back next year. You can trade him. And, That's where – Okay, he's, he's but, okay but fine. You're going to trade – I understand that. You're going to trade him. But you know what? Now you're, you're right back to square one where you need to fill the corner, you know, right. with but power you're, again. But you're, you're not going to get rid of him because you're – who – those teams that are in position to make the playoffs, I get it. Where they want to get rid of starters at this point, I don't think so. Not not, no. the, not the players that are Abreu helping them. Abreu and they're Cabrera, at, right? they're they're probably going to get rid of their 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 Triple A players or maybe like their Double A players, just kind of like any, what New York did. Our farm New league's New depleted with that's the White Sox. I would just I can see I can see that that them probably doing that, but. Cabrera's yeah. got a, a lot of money uh, out there on him. I mean, try to get rid of him. Maybe somebody will pick up that contract, but I don't. You got huge money coming on James Shields. Uh, you know, he's 34. He's got two more years, 35 and 36. He's got an option at the end of this year. He's a player option yeah, for two years option. for like 25. He's but not, he, he's but not he going did, anywhere. But he did yeah. smoke the Cubs the other night. He's been okay, <laughs> but he's been, he's been okay. He, the funny thing is that the only time he's been good is when he's been soft tossing. When he, when he tried to go in there and throw the heater, he doesn't have the heater anymore. It's down about two miles per hour. And the thing is, the league's going to easily pick up that he's soft tossing everything. And, you know, I think for the next two years, I think he could be a disaster. But you paid for him. And it's funny because you got rid of one guy with Danks where you had all this money left over. You cleared yourself out of that. And then you went back and you end up picking well, up this guy. LaRoche's salary is out of the, out of the, the history, too. So yeah, LaRoche, but that was, that was $10 million for this year. I that's mean, a, for one player, that's a lot. Man. Well, I mean, it it's the right, but it's only one year. And that's a kind of offset. That's why they got. That's why they could get rid of Danks and still take his, I think it was $20 million for this year or something like that. Yeah. So, so you, got, you, you got some money that's going to be available. I mean, they're probably not going to be able to – uh, looking at the future, they're not going to probably do the same thing they did this offseason season. Well, I'll get a bunch of one-year or two-year utility players. And, and but think why do you, well, why do you think that? I think that's exactly what they're going to do. Well, <laughs> I think that that's what they've done the last ten and, years. And you, you know what? You're probably right. You're probably, you're probably <laughs> that's right. what they've been doing for the last ten years. That's, you're probably it's, right. I, I'm I'm hoping that Rick Hahn won't do that. You know, I, I, but, but Rick, I agree. Rick Hahn doesn't want to do it. But your guy, Kenny. Going to step in and you know and throw out that day. Hey, we got to go for it. We got sail and a brave. We got to catch them in their prime. We got to right. And then you're back to that same. What are we doing here? You know. And then you got to bring an Ozzy and let him. If you're going to go crazy, you may as well let Ozzy at the helm. Yeah, that's, 
Ozzy, Ozzy, Ozzy. Well, there you have it, sports fans. Uh, right here on the Average Fan Sports Talk Show, we're here at Rosati's in Old Town. We're going to be doing every Bears game here, so make sure you tune into our YouTube channel at the Average Fan Sports Talk Show, as well as you can jump on our Facebook and stream live with us and make your comments. And hopefully, you can hear us next time. We'll get the microphone situated, but. For Mo, Rock, and Big Fan, we're signing off. The Average Fan Sports Talk Show will catch you in the football season.